Hello and welcome back to the Arcane Forge and to day 27 of the Drawtober Challenge. An illustration challenge where I try and draw every single day throughout the month of October using the on-screen randomly generated prompt words that you should be able to see if I've done my job correctly. And for these illustrations I like to use analog methods, so that's no digital stuff, so I'll be using uh, pens and pencils and inks as well to paint today's illustration. And you're very welcome to join me in this illustration challenge, just make sure to tag me in whatever you come up with so that I can share that with the rest of my community. But otherwise I think it's time to get started with today's illustration based on the prompt word pack. So let's go. So with a prompt like pack, there's all sorts of things that you could come up with. It could be packing a bag, you could be packing a bag of holding maybe, setting out for an adventure, little Bilbo Baggins, stuffing things into a satchel so that you can follow your dwarven adventuring party to go and fight a massive dragon. Sorry, spoilers for The Hobbit. You could draw the party's rogue packing treasure into their backpack, trying to escape a dungeon. You could draw a wolf pack or something along those lines. A pack of lies, who knows? We've got an election coming up, so goodness knows. Or at least you have an election coming up. Most of my viewers are in America, so good luck to you all. But I decided to draw my pack, my party of adventurers, my family. So I thought I'd have a go at drawing my dogs, and me and my wife, as a bunch of adventurers. I've drawn my sweet little Nilbog goblin-y angel hog uh, Myrtle, the little French bulldog, uh, floating ominously with light shining from her eyes and mouth as she casts some sort of warlock-like eldritch symbol on the ground, rising from which come several shadowy clawed hands. Despite her very, very cute and cuddly appearance, she is an absolute terror. And I love her so, so much. She is very, very cute. She's very cuddly. She's always following either me or my wife around. She likes to sit on our lap. She's snoring away. I'm sure you can hear in the background. Um, that is just a fact of life uh, for the time being until I get my audio recording uh, sort of studio fully set up. I'm nearly there. But um, even then, she'll probably want to be lying next to the door so that she doesn't miss out. She has terrible FOMO. If you go into another room, uh, she always wants to be with you. She's not got such a problem with like separation anxiety when it comes to leaving the house. But if she knows you're doing something interesting or if multiple people are going to be sitting in a room, she really wants to just be in that room. She's a sweet, sweet, needy girl, but she's also an absolute terror. She is as cheeky and destructive as she is adorable, and she's very, very cute. So um, that goes to show how much destruction she can create. So I thought I would uh, show her dual nature here as she levitates off the ground and summons dark tendrils to destroy our foes. I've drawn myself here as a wizard, casting a ray of light with a nice little curly staff. Unfortunately, leaning a little bit forward, so my chubby belly is getting in the way, causing a few fabric wrinkles here and there. But also, I've got a sort of arcane focus as a little floating crystal around my forehead. Riding behind me, I've got my wife, Yvonne, who is uh, punching out um, a few blasts of lightning. If we were all spellcasters, Myrtle would definitely make a pact with some sort of infernal deity very quickly. I feel like the amount of research that I do on my Monster Mondays hopefully indicates that I would be some kind of wizard, and Yvonne pretty much is a sorcerer. Eh? <laughs> you would be. Uh, rage fueled, uh, uh, rage fueled magic. I think would definitely work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Yvonne comes across as quite a uh, timid, I guess, when you first meet her uh, person, but has what I like to call the no BS force field. That if any kind of self-aggrandizement or general lies or perhaps posing any kind of a threat to anyone who's made it past her no BS force field uh, poses. Well, I would, I would say to those people, uh, Yvonne is easily a challenge rating 30 creature. Scottish. Yeah, she's Scottish. Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, she is my, my backup. <laughs> yeah, I did. I was planning on you not being in the room when, you were, <laughs> when this was going on. But yeah, um, my sort of defender, I guess. And uh, also my closest ally. Metal just snorted there because I'm being cringeworthy, I guess. But yeah, so I thought uh, one of the other things I thought I would do is uh, you know, this is I'm drawing us as D and D characters, so I like to draw us in in fantasy stuff. But my my wife always likes to um, kind of have 
as modern dress as I will let her away with in our campaigns, basically. Um, and also the other important thing is that all of her characters have to have pockets. Um, lots and lots of pockets and satchels and things like that. My wife has quite a bad back. Um, and uh, as a result, um, cannot fathom the idea that an adventurer would want to carry their materials in a massive backpack on their back. Um, and therefore would do the far more practical thing of sewing a lot of pockets and things like that onto their clothes. So she has some cargo trousers here to stash her adventuring gear. It's a level of detail that I wouldn't normally put into a character, but I think that is something that, as someone who has just played this kind of game for a long time, I would never think of, which is why I like introducing new people to D&D and things like that, because these are character features that I wouldn't normally put on characters, but it's the kind of, you know, different people bring different attitudes and things like that to the game, so I like someone's fresh take on this kind of thing. So pockets, not just a requirement in the real world in dresses, and skirts and general women's clothing like jeans that have more than just a thumbs amount of pocket space but also you know like the bag of holding is like my wife's immediate go-to because that should be a thing in real life basically look one of us needs to be tough and it's not gonna be me <laughs> And then finally, um, because we have a massive imbalance in our party with super, super low HP um, and a lot of spell casting, we don't have a tank and we're going to get crushed by whatever DM is is uh, is here. I also decided to draw Bella uh, the Staffy as a massive dire hound that we are all riding. Now, unfortunately, I made Bella uh, a little bit feline looking here. I don't really know what I did to make her look too feline. I think maybe I made her nose too narrow or something. Um, but... I wanted to immortalize her because during this pandemic, unfortunately, yeah, I, I had to unfortunately put Bella down uh, during uh, this pandemic to make 2020 even more of a crap year than it is. We discovered, unfortunately, she was a very, very old girl. She was, was she 16? 13. She was 13 um, this year. So she's a very old girl. She used to have a kind of, uh, you know, her face, she, she's uh, sort of we used to call her the little potato because A, as a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, she was very round. She had a barrel chest as is characteristic of the breed. She had this nice kind of fawn colour to her. And when she was younger, she had uh, kind of like, I don't know what you call it, like black markings on her face uh, that led all the way up from her eyebrows down to her snout pretty much. But she'd been getting older and older and that had become salt and pepper and then sooty and then just pure white leaving just some very fabulous eyeliner and a little black snout. She was very, very old, uh, and she liked her own space. She's a very, very sweet girl. Probably the gentlest dog that I've ever encountered. Very, very kind. She was very, very empathic. If you were ever upset or something like that, she could immediately tell and would come straight over and come and sit by you and uh, sometimes even climb onto you and just uh, look you in the eyes. She always had very upturned eyebrows. We used to call her the sad dog because she had this uh, little piercing gaze. She would let you know when she was done walking, she was a very old lady, so you'd go walking and then about halfway through the walk she would decide she was just done and wanted to go home and would be very belligerent and just sit down and stare at you with these very, very sad eyes, making you feel extremely guilty. But as I say, during August we discovered that unfortunately she had a tumour growing in her stomach kind of region and she had lived a very long and very good life and unfortunately, we were told that the kindest thing for Bella would be to let her go to sleep. And that absolutely tore my soul out and crushed me completely. She was one of the greatest family members I could ever have possibly asked for. And I sometimes still stay awake at night, unable to stop thinking about how much I miss her. She's a very, very good girl. <laughs> unlike Myrtle who will not be yeah, unlike Myrtle who won't be quiet during this whole recording <laughs> that's right no, it's okay it's okay um, but yeah she is whether she's alive or not she is a member of our family she's part of the pack and I wanted to immortalise her in this drawing despite the fact I didn't get her proportions exactly right but you know the essence of her is still there she had these massive uh, black ears one of which was kind of folded backwards. Unfortunately, Bella was very badly abused um, when she was a little pup. She was a rescue, and uh, she had what we assume was a uh, burnt ear, one of her ears. She had like one and a half ears, basically. One of them was kind of curled backwards and uh, quite badly damaged. 
And she also had what we call the leopard print on her head, these little black marks, uh, which were unfortunately from her first owner repeatedly shooting her with a an air rifle. She still had like one pellet or something like that somewhere uh, around one of her ears, I think is, is what we were told, but... Um, uh, she was safe and fine, essentially. Um, she had lots of these little black marks, though, um, that, like we say, just looked a little bit like leopard print if you didn't know what you were seeing. For her first uh, couple of years of life, she was kept entirely indoors and uh, didn't know what the outside felt like, so uh, she didn't know what to think of rain. Actually, she did know what to think of rain. She did not like it. Um, so uh, living in Scotland, if it was ever raining, which it does quite a lot, she would just belligerently refuse to go outside. She was but she was a very, very good girl, and uh, we will miss her until our very final days. She was a good girl, and uh, I thought her propping up our party, being our uh, defender, because she was always kind of looking out for us, being our sturdy mount, being our dire hound here, would be a good call. So yeah, this is a drawing of my pack. I'm sorry this uh, got a little bit bleak, but what can I say? 2020 is a terrible year, and this was one of my worst events in it, so... I thought I would draw the positives and draw my family, draw my pack. And I hope your pack are doing fantastically well. I hope you're keeping safe. I hope you're keeping close. Unless there are people outside of your household, and so in which case definitely don't stay close because we're in the middle of a pandemic. And I hope you're enjoying the Drawtober Challenge. Despite this somewhat somber edition, I really enjoyed making this illustration. It was therapeutic and it was nice and fun. So I hope you have a good day. I look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow for day 28. And the prompt word, which I think, yes, is delete. Plenty to go on there. So have a good day, guys. Bye. Yeah.